So, hello everybody, I'm Rui Gato and I am a touch designer. No, no. Uh, I got hooked in 2011. Uh, it's been, I don't know, maybe one hour and 55 minutes. So, the last time I got a hit of touch designer, it was over there in the audience. I just grabbed my laptop and I did a little bit more of touch designing. So, I'm uh, uh, very thankful to be hooked to such a positive thing, such an amazing thing that gives my ideas and my uh, expression uh, actually so many possibilities. So it's, it's a very big thank you to Derivative guys and team from the bottom of my heart and my mind and my soul. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. So, uh, I use it for both things. I do professional work and I do artistic collaborative projects. I'm going to just speed up on this because I don't want to talk about either of these things because I really like to do artistic collaborative projects and I really like to do pro professional work. But uh, right now I, I want to show you a personal project. So it's neither this. So I'm just going to jump right in and show you some stuff that I've done. <laughs> Uh, so, in the beginning, there was like this crazy band that uh, is a Portuguese band called the Blast Blasted Mechanism. They came to me and uh, they asked me, oh, can you do a video mapping? Uh, this, is, this was like 2011 and I said, okay, yeah, yeah, let's go. So, let me try to find if someone wants to use a good tool with me. Uh, and I found uh, this amazing guy that it's kind of 50%, the other 50% of the Portuguese touch designer community right now. Uh, it's uh, David Negrão and uh, we got into this adventure of doing this crazy balloon stage design and uh, video map and synced it with the uh, LTC time code to the, to the drummer and it was really nice. After that, uh, I went doing some crazy shit uh, in theater with uh, the, this great uh, friend of mine, which is actually a company, not just one person, lots of persons. Uh, the JDM uh, company, theater company. Um, we used a lot of Kinect. Actually, on this, we did something that ap only after I discovered that it wasn't possible to do, only after I did it, which was use two, two Kinects on the same computer. Uh, it was theoret theoretically impossible at the time, but uh, actually, uh, it, 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 it was done. And um, they, they travel a lot. Um, in the, the theater company, so it was really nice. Um, I did also, uh, this is all collaborative, so this is never just me. This is always me with someone else. So uh, I did, uh, uh, I'm proud to, to be part of this collective, which does this crazy tower that you see here. Um, it's, it's kind of a sound to light, video to light system that reacts to the, the main stage of the, the, this festival and um, we are like four, uh, actually five persons that we have, all, all of us have iPads and we act like a band, but it's a light band, so uh, we are called like the five watts. Um, so we do, we do like this, uh, this fun project uh, playing for the bands, but we play light. Um, so, um, uh, we did, uh, me and David also did a very nice interactive uh, installation at the Punk Festival using Leap Motion. Um, it was really nice. Uh, we did also some research on a digital lab in Wales. Uh, this is a theremin uh, being used, uh, um, actually, not a theremin, it's a projection that uh, uh, uses a Leap Motion that tracks all 10 fingers. Uh, to generate uh, musical and uh, visual feedback uh, output into, into a projection on a, on a garden. Um, this is a kind of a performative installation, not a generative, because uh, we were performers doing the, the sequence of the installation. And uh, this is a very nice project. It was the first time that uh, we got in contact, me and David got in contact with somebody else from the, the, the community. Uh, so Daniel Schaeffer, um, he actually started this project in the technical side uh, from João Baira, it's a project of, of uh, João Baira, uh, um, which is that datagram actually. 
and then he invited us to go uh, to Chicago to do this reactive uh, installation with lots of faces in the audience. Um, in the audience, not, not in the audience, in the, the trees uh, around the audience, so it was really nice. Um, video mapping stuff, video mapping stuff, um, generative stuff in the, the, the Boom Festival, yeah, and so that's it. And then um, after that, I have to show you, because I really like to do professional work with the designer, so I have, uh, I will try to show you, let me try to bring this up, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, there, there it is. So a little bit more analytic stuff, experiential design we do at Alta. It's a company that I started with uh, some of my sisters. Uh, so actually the problem uh, of getting trust uh, on, on the company is actually bypassed because they are my sisters, so we trust each other. And we do uh, other stuff that experiential design, but mainly the main focus is experiential design. So we did museums, we have a case study called Irisada World Surfing Reserve, which is actually a, an interactive table. And uh, it works, ah, I think I reached the limit of, ah, no, no, ah, there it is. So this is an interactive table that uh, works as an interpretation uh, tool for um, a museum, actually, not a museum, but an interpretation center for a surfing reserve. So this is a permanent installation. It's working, uh, it will be two years old in, the, in, I don't know, three months from now. And uh, we are very proud and everybody likes, likes, likes it very much. So it's been working really well. Uh, we actually added to that space a, a Connect Media Gallery. Um, so yeah, blah, 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 Connect Media Gallery. It works for all sizes of persons. Uh, we kind of, that was the main problem uh, that we uh, reached by uh, researching this and uh, it works for kids and uh, for big persons so uh, it kind of needs more research but it's working also. We also did uh, storefront installations, actually this was first before of that with Kinect, Connect, or Kinect. and uh, we did also some exper um, uh, exhibition presentations for um, a more artistic, actually, context, but still on the company side. Ah, and we did the last show uh, that we did uh, was a, a big video mapping show with uh, 100 meters, very large stuff, but um, actually not so demanding in terms of technical uh, development and, uh, and um, investigation, but at the same time, very nice to, 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 to research the content in a different way. So that's it. That's the, the work. Now we can go for the thing that I'm actually eager to show you. <laughs> so, let's start. By Maybe I'll start by, by talking to you guys first a little bit. And then I show you a small snippet of video and then I do a, kind of a, a visit to the network. And then I'll do a demonstration. I'll try to do this quick. So, um, what I'm here to talk about to you is about music being generated by geometry and not the opposite. So normally um, I tend to, to, to find projects that um, are used to visualize music that's being composed uh, with Ableton Live or Logic or whatever, and then you get the output. Um, of the music by somehow MIDI, OSC, whatever, and then you just visualize it. Um, actually, it's the opposite the, what I, I, I tried to show you. I, I'll try to show you a basic, uh, not basic, but kind of uh, very, uh, uh, how, how, can, how can I put it? Um, yeah, very universal forms of geometry, so not too much complicated, very observable in nature, uh, some forms that we are very used to, so regular polygons, stuff like that. And uh, I, I just, the research is about how can I extract music from the geometry um, in a very simple way um, and in a way that can be useful uh, to research, but at the same time, in, in a way that is interesting per se uh, as, a, as geometry. So, 
Um, let me just show you a bit uh, of a video of the early stage of this development. So uh, I began this, this uh, research two years ago, and uh, after, I don't know, maybe three months, I did uh, an output uh, of the early research, which was a uh, chill out set at the Boom Festival. Uh, so, oops, I can't see me. Uh, okay, no problem. Um, so, um, I did a one hour chill out set based on the, the geometry engine. It was still in the beginning, but um, I will show you a little bit of that. Ah, and uh, I will, to do that, I will use uh, a video player made in touch. Not Greg's video player, actually mine video player. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so it's a bit simpler, but I think it works. Let me just check for volume first. This, ah, okay, I have keys, cool. <laughs> There you go. some problem of uh, video. Maybe I'll show you just like this. Yeah. So I told you it's my video player, not Greg's video player. <laughs> Mine has the same feature. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see this is very simple actually. It's not too complicated. It's just two musical parameters here, just pitch and rhythm. So actually I'm not yet on duration, either duration or uh, timbre or modulation, just two parameters. Because the engine at that time were really, really, really 
fluctuating all, all the way around. So I couldn't use direct rhythm information from, from touch because it was badly designed, so it, it was still in the beginning. So this is kind of fake uh, rhythm because it's being quantized actually real time, but not in touch time. Of, of that um, uh, of that engine so what do I use to do this I use touch designer I use lemur and I use Ableton live okay so let's start with the lemur so what's the task of the lemur it's user interface so I use the lemur because I'm very used to it it was the first uh, multi-touch uh, uh, thing that I ever used, even before iPads and stuff like that. It was 2005, so I was kind of, whoa, what's this? I can use all 10 fingers, I'm a lemur, nice. So I just uh, went for it and I got the, the hardware and then I fell in love with the software, actually. So I used the, the, the software, not the, the hardware nowadays, but I, I kept using it because uh, I think it's really nice. So. Um, and then uh, the lemur, it's working bi-directionally, so uh, it sends OSC to Ableton and Ableton has the task to do clock generation, it has the task to, to, to serve as a sequencer and it has a sequencer and, and uh, not a MIDI node sequencer, it's a sequencer of just parameters uh, and uh, it has a task to generate sound. Um, and then we have like the main part of it, which is the process I call TD render, um, that uh, has the task of generate the geometry, do the video rendering, and uh, it runs at 6 FPS, which is important to know, uh, not right now, I will explain you later why. And then there is a different process called TD generator, which is uh, responsible for the generation of the MIDI nodes. And it runs at 480 FPS. Um, and that's uh, the main uh, thing that um, actually makes the difference nowadays between the engine that I'm going to demonstrate here and the first one. So uh, I spent like one year maybe uh, in my spare time try to optimize uh, and try to reach a very stable clock so I can uh, bypass the, the quantization that I was using in Max for Life and just do pure touch design rhythm because it's much more flexible to when, when you are a, a touch designer um, you, you, you know that all the power that you have in your mind have to not have to be you can use you can go back to Maxwell Life or whatever to that you, you, you find more uh, specifically uh, um, able to do the, the, the test that you want but normally you tend to okay let's see how can I do this in touch design so uh, I found out that um, after a painstakingly process, I was kind of uh, isolating parts of the network until I reached uh, actually a uh, uh, conclusion which was, okay, I just need to have the MIDI generation part isolated, not rendering, just doing a, a high frame rate uh, uh, process uh, and I get stable, stable output and, and so it is. So this is kind of the schematics uh, of it. So the lemur receives us OSC from uh, from um, touch designer render um, just for practice. Well, actually, I, I'm not going to to, 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 to show you all the this um, this schematic stuff. I'm, I'm just going to show you the network, which is much easier to, to demonstrate. So I'm going to bring up. Ableton and two touch designer process and the lever. I'm just trying to be 
here in the Lemur Mac. Okay. Checking for latency. Okay. So this is simple network, not not uh, too much complicated. I start with the render. So we have like OSC in that's receiving OSC from the lemur. Uh, actually, from Ableton, not not from the lemur. I can show you guys how that OSC works. Uh, Ableton is still yeah, it's still loading. Okay, it takes a while. It's the beta version also. Ah, there it is. So actually, it's Max for Life um, that's generating the OSC. So um, here we have like six layers. All of them are the same, so we can just study one of them. And uh, we have like a bunch of parameters um, that got um, sequenced uh, as clips, uh, but the clips don't have any MIDI. Uh, they only have like parameters for the geometry, and that gets. Um, these knobs going and these knobs get piped in via OSC to here. So after that, all these uh, six layers, I have six layers, but I could have like, I don't know, 20 or whatever. So it's six just because it's more manageable and it's still, I think it's enough for, for research and for musical applications. So the OSC information gets into the this part, which is geo, uh, so it's geo generation. Then you have transform, and then you have Cartesian to polar, which is actually useful for the triggering uh, in the rotation. So all of this I'm not going to explain you now, but uh, it's just selecting different parts of the OSC and the filtering stuff uh, to get smooth response and blah, blah, blah. And the geometry generation starts here. So we have like, 12 basic forms, uh, we have a line, and then triangle, uh, square, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, blah, 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 until the, the dodeptagon, I think, the 12 one. Um, and every, every single form uh, gets translated into SOP, and uh, after that uh, I can cross uh, fade between them, so I get smooth translations uh, in the form. So I have like a line, Triangle, whatever. So I can just smooth translate between them. So after that, that's the generation. So after that, there's a bunch of processes that I find useful, and I kept, I keep developing these processes in terms of musical uh, applications. So the first one is the Euclid um, generation. Uh, actually, it's a very simple algorithm. I believe that. Who knows the Euclid algorithm here? Uh, anybody knows? Nobody? No? Yeah? Okay. Cool. Um, so, it's actually very simple to explain. Uh, you have like a bunch of possibilities uh, and uh, a bunch of triggers that you want to fit on those possibilities, and you just uh, uh, get the response of the most uh, um, uh, homogeneous. Um, um, distribution for those possibilities. So, if, for instance, if we have like uh, an hexagon or uh, an octagon, something like that, um, and you have like three possibilities, it will it will spread the possibilities as even as possible. So it's easier to explain with an hexagon. So this is very fairly uh, straightforward. So. One trigger, another don't trigger, another trigger, another don't trigger, and so on. So this is highly interesting in terms of musical applications because um, most of the rhythms in the world are made using the Euclidean algorithm. Even so, that people don't know that. But if you if you research most of traditional rhythms, they are very very keen to be fitted into one of these possibilities. So this is a transformation, uh, and after that there are a bunch of, of transformations. One of them, it's, called, it's kind of a stellar thing, which is uh, using the pentagon and copying it. It's basic stuff, so just transformations, 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 deletes and stuff like that. Fillet, fractal, um, particles, blah, 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 face it, and out. So this is just the geometry. Also the OSC goes uh, into an out and gets passed by to transform. So this is transform, 
And um, in transform, ah, I need to show you just a little detail that is important. Um, I didn't show in the schematics, but I'll show you now. So Ableton is sending link, with which I actually need to turn on. Okay, so it's sending link via the amazing uh, Ableton shop that we got uh, yeah. not so long ago. Uh, so I was actually uh, uh, trying to find a stable way to get uh, time information uh, for a while, and uh, this one is actually the best one, and it gets uh, subdivided into different uh, different um, subdivisions of the, that uh, ramp, and um, that it's actually what's being used to uh, rotate uh, the geometry. So I'm going to skip this part also because uh, I'm really eager to to jump into the demonstration. After that, you got Cartesian to polar, which is actually uh, based in. Um, let me just cut the cut the sounds. So I can speak. Which is actually based on a very interesting uh, um, um, post that I found in the. Uh, actually, it was not me. David found in the in the forums, um, which was a Fermat spiral that being um, rotated. And um, it was a very simple logic that was finding the triggers. So we got x axis and uh, y axis. So every time the x axis uh, find a, a, a vertex or a, a vertice, in um, between zero and minus two, I got the logic. And um, every time I, uh, I got a positive value for the y, um, I also got uh, got an it, and uh, got both combined together in the logic. So it detects every time it crosses the line, the, 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 the green line, so any geometry. So, uh, after this, this information gets joined together, triggers and frequency, actually the only two information that I need to generate the MIDI, and it gets pumped into another process via shared memory. Um, actually, there was a time that I was doing this in a different way, so the other process would receive the geometry via a that, uh, a, a touch out that uh, um, um, uh, operator that uh, would recreate the geometry on the other process and then it was much more complicated. Now it's much more simple, so I will show you the generator part. So this information gets received here, uh, triggers and frequencies, and it's again not too much complicated. We got like this um, thing here that will say, okay, this is frequency, how do you turn it into MIDI? Uh, it's like this. Um, so I did it in, um, in chops. And this is the output that gets sent into um, the, the, MIDI, the MIDI shop. So right now, let me just put more notes going on. So it's already format formatted specifically to, to, to MIDI. Um, and all of them got together and got replaced by a table of zeros of notes, because that's the way I, I know how to do it. And, um, and it goes to Ableton, finally. Yeah, into MIDI. So um, that's for musical notes, for visualization, the whole thing got into this render component and uh, it's still not rotated because uh, I discovered that it's better to, to rotate on, on, on comp level the geo so the information comes from uh, from actually other part of the network so it gets scaled and rotated on the GPU and you get visualization of that on the render so that's what gets out to the, to the visualization. It's actually a very technical visualization. It's not made to be uh, eye candy or something, so something like that. It's made for me to be clear as a, as, a, as a musical notation, something like that. So it's as simple as possible. So, um, one more note before the demonstration. Um, the MIDI. Uh, the MIDI, no, the, the OSC that gets in from the lemur, it gets reflected back into the lemur. 
Uh, don't ask me how this is work. This, this works, but uh, it actually works. So um, I don't know how it's something on the lemur side. Um, but um, what happens is that I got like um, all the, the information uh, bidirectionally working between uh, lemur. Um, touch designer and and uh, actually Ableton Live, so it keeps me updated. The, the interface keeps updated on the lemur, um, and actually I can follow a sequence if I want, or I can improvise and get back to that sequence. So, yeah, I think that's it for for network. Uh, I will accept questions after the demonstration if you have questions about the, the network. And now I, I will just try to demonstrate the current state of the, of the engine.
Okay, now I think I should say something about the geometry actually. <laughs> or pitch quantized, uh, it's actually the harmony inside the geometry that you, you guys are hearing. So this is chromatic scale, it's still equal temperament. Um, I would love to research after this the proper scales that the geometry is being genera ge generating. Uh, I, today I saw Felix's work and I was just mind blown by, by, by his work because he has done such an amazing work. Uh, investigating all the sonic possibilities. I, this is not sonic possibilities, this is just simple music, um, but I would love to go also in that direction, so I hope we can collaborate soon, Felix. <laughs> um, but uh, just to show you a very, uh, very simple approach to what I mean by this. Um, so using, right now I'm, I'm using uh, on the yellow layer, this um, uh, pentagon, right? So this has a specific harmony because it's, it has a specific distance and pro proportion between the notes. But if I change it into a triangle, it has a different harmony, which actually an octave, because that's the relationship between uh, the ratio of growth of triangles. The growth, then it's by the power of two. So it's a, it's an octave. So if I if I change to a square, it has a different relationship. So each form has its own harmony inside. Uh, so hexagons uh, hexagons are very very interesting. All of all of them are very interesting. Heptagons also very interesting. Octagons. So forth. Um, so uh, I'm just going to to show you some some of the forms that this is still not, actually not not it's not a concert it's just research material so it's, it's not arranged as music um, but uh, so hepta heptagon.
different for different shapes. Trees with hexagons, with uh, squares. Now with S curves. And strange mix. Sounding a little bit weird. Particles. Yeah, particles. Particles are fun. Particles bring the randomness to it. So I can just bring up particles. It becomes like very organic. Sometimes it glitches a bit because it has to pull the particles from the system. But yeah. So yeah, that's it. language that is similar to Objective-C. Uh, so lots of the things that I still do on the liver are done uh, here. The, the code is here and then it's passed uh, with parameters to touch designer. I actually, I do that because I'm very used to the liver and sometimes it's easier for me to program those stuff uh, in the liver. I will tend to do the, that kind of stuff in touch designer because again, more flexible, more possibilities, more everything. For instance, um, if I choose like uh, a five, like a, a pentagon, um, I will have like these submenus here that are related to that choice. So all the angles that I have on this uh, shortcut are subdivisions of the division of 360 by five. So are rhythmical possibilities that are connected with the pentagon. Okay. So if I change to six. Uh, I will have different angles. 
So all of this is, is coded uh, in the Lemur, not actually in the, in the, in the touch designer side. Um, but uh, yeah, that's why I use the, the Lemur. It's very, very, very more powerful than the, than the other ones. Yeah, the, the touch design, the touch OSC and, and stuff like that. Go ahead. Yes. Um. <coughs> hey, very good stuff. Thanks for playing. Thank you. I'm wondering about why did you use the diatonic scale? Because the diatonic scale is kind of an artificial construction and does not really relate to the ratios that, for example, the Pythagorean. Yeah, yeah, shape I, know. Would do. I, know. So I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. about well, maybe is it more. Accurate representation yes, yeah, that's, that's actually a very good question, thank you, because um, I'm using the chromatic uh, equal tempered scale, occidental uh, scale, because actually all our software right now runs based, not all of it, but uh, most of it runs based on, on, on that, on that uh, equal temperament, so I can use, right now I'm using the uh, Ableton Live to generate the sound, so I'm just taking the BD and then using uh, normal stuff. To, to do the, the, the music. Uh, this is not what I want to do in terms of um, sonic exploration, mainly because of that. Maybe because, because of what you just said. Because the internal frequency uh, relationships between the sounds is much more interesting if it is extracted from the geometry and it's not stick to a grid, which is actually what's happening on current occidental music. Most of, of, not only of uh, Indian music, all, always have, uh, also have more uh, precise uh, grids and more different grids, but it's also a grid. So, in terms of maybe a more Pythagorean approach uh, of harmonics, I think I will start there, uh, do my research, uh, try to, to think uh, more in mathematical terms in terms of frequencies, and then uh, I will see what, what happens. Mainly, I think scales and, and chromatic uh, temperaments and, and stuff like that are useful so mu musicians can play together, you know? But, yeah. It, uh, yeah, I was thinking that this would be really a great skill, for example, for string machines, they have Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Actually, string, the string, the string analogy is actually the, the one that I, I want to start with. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? No. Oh, okay. I, I missed uh, the reason why you had to run the one hand application for 150 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I found out that. Uh, well, maybe this is lack of techno um, technological um, uh, knowledge for me, um, but uh, experimenting uh, with, the, with the networks, I found out that if I run at 480 uh, frames per second, these objects, it's much more stable uh, in the output. I don't know why. Uh, I think it's probably, I don't know, related to... I don't know, something that fluctuates uh, in, the, in the process, and it's, if it fluctuates really quickly, it will not deviate so much in the time. It still deviates a bit, but, uh, well, actually, uh, I think it's okay right now for me. So I stabilized here at 480. But um, one of the things that I would love to... Actually, I promised myself that I would stop uh, trying to perfect the engine and I will go into development again to new features and to sound and stuff like that but I'm always itching about one thing and I'm glad that you you are asking because I think it's it's uh, something that you might help me I don't know um, <laughs> yeah yeah definitely yes yeah. so yeah support call um, so which is right now to do the logic um, let me just put a different sound because this one is a bit scary. Okay, so right now the logic um, it's running uh, at uh, 480 samples per second, both of the logic operators that do the detection of this this uh, triggers. Okay. So right now, ever, ever time crosses, uh, each time it crosses zero, in between zero and minus two, I got a trigger, and every time that happens in the upper quadrants, that trigger is, is validated. But 
what happens is if I put the window, for instance, 0 0.5, uh, that's the X window, right? I lose resolution and I don't know how to solve this. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just lose the triggering, you know? And, and that's just because the, 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 the logic has a different, uh, smaller window. So please help me with that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. Any more? Any more questions? <coughs> no? Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.